So, this is a story all about how my sight got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, I think you say right on, when you see how I generated the data for my blog with Python. <laughs> In west of Toronto, oh no, just kidding. Not gonna go through the whole uh, song there. So, yeah, so I, there's gonna be some lyrics on screen that may be offensive. So just be warning of that. I'm not gonna say those things, but it's your responsibility not to read those things. Okay, so the site I made is called Rap Words, back in 2011, actually. And it's a pretty simple site. It was pretty one purpose, where I just take a interesting word that was uttered by a rap artist, and I have the definition of this word. You can click on the word to go to the dictionary website, and you have the rhyming couplet, you have the artist, and you have a song name with a link to YouTube. So that's the whole extent of the website, but actually it's pretty fun, especially when you find you know, a super gangster rapper saying some word that you wouldn't normally expect. And you, know, there might not be, you might know a lot of these words, but this still is extra novel because you know, rappers are saying it. So I realized quickly that manually doing this, and by manually I meant like uh, either grepping interesting words out of a huge corpus of hip hop lyrics or just searching rap genius was like, very slow, and this process could most likely be automated. I could probably automate generating content for this blog because this is all just a very strict pattern. Or at least have some kind of minimally uh, like review stage where I could just check to see whether or not the script did it right. So I'm gonna take you through that journey now as I went from you know, this raw data of hip hop lyrics to making these blog posts, all inside this little Python notebook. Python 3, actually. So what I use for this, maybe I'll just make it one bigger. What I use for this are just um, some standard library stuff, pandas and numpy in your everyday anaconda installation, as well as some specific stuff, like I use the Wiktionary parser, and there are a lot of dictionary APIs online with probably some really good content, but I just decided to get, use Wiktionary for whatever reason, historical reasons. It's what I, in 2001, those are the links that I was making. And to get information about songs, I used Spotify, it's a Spotify API, as well as the YouTube API to get a little information there as well. And language is processed with the Natural Language Toolkit, but it's really simple. And this Pi Pronouncing Library is like, has some redundancy with this one, this Natural Language Toolkit, but it also was pretty cool at giving you information about rhymes. PyTumblr eventually, at the very end, was used to make those posts on my blog. So I'm gonna execute it in, in, in uh, real time too. So you can see that this stuff all happens within reasonable amounts of computing time. So outside of this script, there's just one step I did. It was when I downloaded these hip hop lyrics. I shamelessly downloaded them off the internet with curl, just the Unix command. Probably you could have done it with beautiful soup or some nice uh, web scraping thing in Python as well, but I'm just gonna assume that it's on my computer already. And unfortunately it might not be on the GitHub repo when I do post this online, but it's, that's up to you and it's not very difficult at all. So there are text files which I downloaded from this site, the original hip hop lyric archive. And I strip away, they're, they're not quite just text files because they have like some HTML ads. So I strip them away with this processing step. And um, you know, don't try to read every line of this Python, iPod, this Jupyter notebook if you're trying to. I'm just gonna conceptually tell you what each block does and maybe you'll break down in some of them interesting parts. So this is the longest running cell in the notebook, which basically globs up all of, gets a, gets a selection of all the text files in all these directories. Like these directory tree is like hip hop artist by you know, album, by something else, by song name. And I load them all into memory. To be honest, it's only 150 megabytes of text files. It's not really a big data set. And you'll see how many songs I have later. So it actually completed running what I did is you know, luckily these text files actually have some pretty good structure as well. The person who authored this website was kind enough to always, almost always have artist and song and typed by strings somewhere in the document. So I used those with regular expression search to find those and get a selection of, you know, what the artist is, song, and typed by I don't really care about, but it actually tells me when the lyrics start. So I actually start capturing the data after they mention who typed this lyric. So I load those into you know, lists, each of these for each song, into this sort of, um, well, it's a default dictionary of lists, but it doesn't really matter. And you can use pandas as a nice way to visualize this table that I extracted. And this is just like some chunk of it. 
where you can see artists, like there's some new songs here too, this like site is being updated. And I kind of shoved the entire string of text of lyrics into this one column. So this isn't a very exciting pandas data frame in that we can't really do a lot of processing, it just is a nice way to visualize what we have here. So this is just a little segment of it. Um, and we have how many songs? 33,000, something to go on, I think. I'm not sure if it's all of them or how complete that is, but it's a pretty good start. So how do you search, um, how do you search through this column of text to find out a word of interest? So for example, how would we search to see how many rap songs have the word Python somewhere in the text? It's not that difficult. I zipped up the artist song and lyrics, which are, you know, just lists, and I did a little, you know, set membership check. Is Python within the set of all lyrics of uh, that particular, you know, frame of that particular song? And uh, the processing happens pretty quickly for 30,000 songs for checking that uh, string. And it's a pretty sizable amount of songs that include Python. And uh, what about Anaconda? This is comparison, what kind of other snakes? I think there's still a lot, still a lot, maybe a bit less. Now the challenge though, with having a data set like this, is exploring it and finding out rare words. I mean, those are, I don't want common words that are uttered by rap artists, I want, you know, those interesting ones, maybe GRE level words that you might study, you know, when you're about to go to college. So one way to do that would be to take um, n-grams. So these are just word frequency counts from some corpus of text from Google. And you can get it from Peter Norvig's website. It's a quarter, a third of a million most frequent words, all in lowercase with counts. And you can just kind of read that in pretty quickly. The problem with this data set is that when you actually go to the bottom of the data set, because I'm looking at word frequency counts, I want infrequent words. So I need to look at the end of this, this data. And Interesting that <laughs> I'm pretty sure none of these are words, and I don't even know why they all start with goo or anything <laughs> for that reason. So there's a bit of strangeness going on in this thing that's directly from, you know, supposedly from Google's processing. I don't know what that is. Maybe you can give me some suggestions later. So why don't we cross-reference this? I do like this column frequency of uh, words being uttered in some big English, like corpus of English, English deck, text. So why don't we cross-reference it with the Scrabble dictionary to get the most reasonable words. So we can load that up as a CSV and then merge it together and then sort by count. And these are now the low frequency count words. And so these are some cool words. If I was to find a rapper saying any of these words, I'd be pretty happy. Insatiably, I mean, we all probably know what that one means, but inhibitive, it'd be cool to find some, rap words, some rappers saying these things, if they ever did, who knows? But let's relax our criteria a little bit more and get a bigger set of words now. Let's get 50,000 words out of this. Well, I think it's, I think it's significantly more, maybe 80,000. So I, I look for ones that have the count less than a certain cutoff, and that's just something I just play around with. If I want the super weird words, I'll lower this number. Anyway, I'm gonna make a set out of those words, and you know, this is the top of the data set, which shows you the, the actual words I'm gonna look for in the A's department. And I'm going to do that same task I did above when I was searching for Python within the set of all lyrics, uh, set of all words within each song, except um, this time I do a set intersection of like, you know, this set of words, this, these 50,000 words that I think are interesting and are not uttered very often in text. I just do that uh, and, the and symbol. It defines the intersection of two sets. And surprisingly, this is pretty darn fast. So that checked for all my words in all the lyrics uh, that I have. And you, this takes an insanely amount of time if you were to do with grep or regular expressions compared to what's going on here. I mean, that maybe also helps because it's in memory. Anyway, let's look at, let's look at the, the um, only the rows or only the lyrics, I should say, only the songs that contain one or more of these words. So whenever there's not an empty set. So I'll execute that and we'll look at uh, here. So this is that column I've added, where I've appended the found words into this column here, and that's just a list also shoved into this uh, object column of this pandas. It's kind of abusing the real use of pandas, but it's still a good way to visualize it, even though they get cut off. So there are some interesting words in here, but already I can see a little bit of a problem. One of the problems is that sometimes certain words get mentioned in hip-hop lyrics that are, um, like either slang words 
or they're just really common in rap music, but not that common in most uh, other uh, English texts. Like, I don't know, maybe MCs, like playas, uh, certain, certain words there. Like, those are things that maybe happen a lot in rap, but not in general. So what we can do is actually make our own word counts, our own one grams. And we can use the collections counter to go through all our lyrics and find the most infrequent words in my data set of lyrics. So that's another way of looking for interesting words. Find ones that only one rapper has ever said this word. That's got to be a cool word. So word counts uh, can be made in the same way. Well, this is the top of the most frequent words. And that's probably not unlike normal text. But we can also go to the bottom and we see some, some stuff too. Um, but l let's, just, let's just go ahead and merge this and we now have a new column of data called wrap matches in that same data frame we were examining before. So sorry, I'm at the bottom. So now we have this column, the, no the normal column here, which is from the um, Scrabble words and then the ones that are rare within rap lyrics. And sometimes there's overlap, shipwrecked and sh shipwrecked, shipwrecked, <laughs> and uh, you know, jubilant. But the problem is a lot of these artists, well, one of the problems is there's a lot of artists in this data set that are not really that recognizable. I mean, 140 Productions, I'm a rap fan, I never heard of them, to be honest. They're still at the top of the data set, but you probably would want to get the most bang for your buck in blog content. You'd probably want some familiar rap artists, right? So you could do that manually. For example, I'm going to look for only rows where the artist is Nas with um, a file name that contains this album Illmatic. So this is like a classic rap album from the 90s. Um, now, it was only five rows, but uh, you know, I had this one particular song I was interested in, Memory Lane, here. And uh, Dingbats, good word, good font. Uh, oh, that's Wing, yeah. And uh, reminisce, gas, taken, trifle. It's interesting. I mean, I think probably we know what trifle means. But for Nas to say it, it's kind of a little bit of a, I'm not saying he's not smart, but it's just a cool word. Like, I don't know the definition off by heart, to be honest, but I know kind of vaguely how to use it. I don't think I've used it in a sentence, so I think it might be a good candidate for maybe a blog post I want to make. Nas saying trifle. And so let's get a little bit more information just about those exact words that were found. Actually, vexed was in there. Vexed is, yeah, that's a pretty good word too. But let's just proceed with trifle for now. I mean, there's a general problem that I haven't really addressed is how you get the cool rap artists out of your list. One, one thing you could do is um, Spotify doesn't give you the play counts for all songs from their API, but they give you this popularity tag. So you could, um, it's a number between 0 and 100 that tells you how popular this song is. So you could kind of rank by that column. I didn't run it through my entire data set, but you, I could possibly do that. But the problem is there's not a lot of songs on Spotify, especially these older rap songs. Um, so, oops. So you probably should use YouTube. And this is like a, um, this is basically just a YouTube call to get a view count as well as the number of days it has been since that rap video was posted on YouTube. Because, right, um, you got to consider that. So here I can get the link to the video, uh, the, the URL code, the video ID to, for this rap video based on just the top search result. So you got to kind of cross your fingers there, do a little checking. And this is the number of uh, views on that YouTube video, and this is the number of days since it's been posted. So you could make your own little metric about how popular a song is based on that. And uh, just to make sure that my video's the correct one, I mean, uh, yeah, probably I could play it, but I think, I think that's it. Pretty sure that's, that, that's the song. And that's going to be useful when I prepare my blog post. So the next part is to get some definitions. As I said, like there's a Merriam-Webster API, and I think there's like a whole bunch of them. But I'm just going to use Wiktionary. Um, Wiktionary parser is like a pretty small script. To be honest, you could probably use any sort of request uh, to get this, because I kind of had to do some processing with regular expressions anyway. So the dictionaries are a hairy matter, because take a word like racket. For example, it's got a popular noun meaning, that like tennis racket. You got the verb to racket something. You have a, a noun that also means a loud noise. And then you also have the fraud or swindle, racketeering. 
So that's kind of a like, hands-on part of this process that inevitably you got to kind of deal with that. Trifle is, as you might already expect, two things. An English dessert made of thick custard, but also um, to deal with something as if we're a little importance or worth. I haven't even showed you the line that Nas used it, but I can already kind of assume that it's probably going to use it in the verb context. So one thing we can do with some um, a little bit of language processing is find the context of the word within the sentence. So that would be, it's called tagging. You can tag things as nouns, verbs. Actually, this is the list of things you can tag with universal parts of speech. So we'll take that, all those particular lyrics. Actually, there's the sentence there. Word to Christ, a disciple of the streets, trifle on beats. Uh, it's kind of just like a stream of consciousness thing going on there. That's not really a complete sentence or like on its own. But we'll take a shot at it. We'll, we'll process it through and tag it and see what we got. Word is a noun, two, yep. Well, that's, anyway. Trifle, it said, was a noun. So that's, well, that's already a little problem there. There's just not enough data in that sentence. For example, if it said, word to Christ, the disciple of the streets, I trifle on beats. Well, if he had said that, then the script would have said, oh, excellent, that's a verb. So we didn't succeed in getting that part. That's just, that's, that's some trouble. But we can at least write a function that pulls out, you know, of the two definitions, it pulls out its best guess based on the part of speech it's in. So that's this little function here, part of speech. Um, and then it returns NA if it couldn't find it. So let's see, just like, just confirm, okay. So I, I gave it the wrap sentence and I gave it the word trifle and then it gave me the, its best guess was that, well, here it's a verb because I altered the string right there. That's kind of cheating. Um, and then this is just a little helper method later on. I can do the same thing, but I can pass the whole lyrics. Okay, so if you want to produce some blog content, you, it's a rhyme. You need to give it uh, both the, the whole rhyming couplet, or else you're just giving a sentence, rap sentences. So lyric split, uh, we'll split up these lyrics, uh, each line into uh, a separate element of this list. Twinkle, twinkle, little star we'll start with. And one thing you could do is just grab the line before and the line after. This is kind of like the lazy man's approach would be like, okay, I want the line that has the word high in it. Okay, we'll take the previous and next one. That's just like selecting on this list. But if you really want to be smart about it, you get the rhyming couplet. And so that you introduce this pronouncing library, which um, not only gives you cool rhymes, like for example, you could say, give me the rhymes of star, and this is just the top 20, there's a whole bunch of them. But you can also get these uh, phonemes, I don't think that's how it's pronounced, where these are like um, parts of speech, these are sounds you would make. For high and sky, it would say that's HH, and then this I1 sound. And so you could de uh, determine that these are rhymes based on just examining the end word, or the end sound of the line. Even works for harder words like orange and hinge, uh, where they have that end GH at the end of the line. And there's also sometimes two pronunciations. I'm not sure how that works for orange. Maybe it's orange and orange? <laughs> I, I don't know, but it is in this A and I sound in the middle, orange. Okay, so rhymes per line is gonna do that for each line of my rap lyrics. At least, okay, let's start with the twinkle twinkle little star. So those are able to identify the rhyming couplets to some extent. You could just group them based on this string here, or this little, uh, you know, the first zeroth element of this tuple. Okay, let's split the rap lyrics. So I've, as you might have been noticing, I've been using this ID, and this is the ID of the Nas song. So now I'm going to take the Nas song, and I'm going to split it, and look for, uh, this. so this is the whole, all the, all the lines of the song, and somewhere in there uh, is the one we're interested in, target word trifle. We're going to get the rhyme version of that. So we have this get rhymes thing. It just loops over all of these lines, gets the last word, gets the um, pronunciation of that word, and then tries to, um, well, I actually haven't done any grouping yet, but that's the next part. So that looks like this. So this is the last sound of each of these lines. So fail and sail, blank and rank. I mean, it's pretty good. It doesn't always succeed, though, because in the case of mine, it somehow determined that that's real, that real sound rhymes with beats. Maybe it's that EA sound, but I'm not sure. So it actually said that these three should be grouped together um, when... Really, I would really only want these last two, but I think we can just, uh, we can work with that. It's not the end of the world to have one extra line in my, in my rap post. Okay, so we can use iter tools group by 
Um, it's a little bit different than the pandas group by. It's like, because it has sequence, sequential, it like maintains the sequence of the uh, lyrics. So I can group them by this column. Um, I'm taking like this exact data here, and I'm just grouping them in sequence by this, this uh, you know, zeroth element. So now we have a list of lists where within each list is like a set of things that rhyme. Strap and wrap are together. So that's length two, like the, that, uh, that set of rhymes, grouped rhymes as I call it. Okay, so rhyme group is, uh, this is just like another method, method to help with that, that just gets out only the content that I want, the particular grouping that contains my word. Okay, and another uh, helper method where instead of giving it grouped rhymes, I can just give it the raw lyrics. So we're actually, we're coming to the end now. We should have some pretty good content already. So now we're gonna start to, the posting part is pretty, is pretty straightforward. I have a template for a post I already have in mind. It's just like the top of the, uh, actually you can go, to, we'll just go to the website, you can see the, the template. Uh, oops, spoiler alert. Voracious, the, the template looks like this. I sub in this value, this and this, and then the lyrics, and then the song and, and, and what, and so forth. So uh, basically sub that in. Format, oh, I haven't executed that. The data, the raw data from the, the row looked like this. I kind of take that information and pass it to these functions, like these helper things I was describing along the way, where we pass the word and the lyrics column, the word and the lyrics, and then the YouTube search of like the artist and song. And then this is like the URL I just invented. Like the, um, so that's that. The post uh, body is just submitting that data to that function up there. And sending off a post to Tumblr is really just this. It's executing this cell, it's actually done. So let's just see, like, uh, please ex I should probably open a new session because. Huh? Let's just give it a, maybe I need to shift. Seems to have succeeded there. This is the, uh, oh, there it is. No, no, voracious. Here you go. Well, let's just open up the one that's pre-done. Pre Could prove that it's done in just a second. But trifle, noun, and English dessert. Just as Nas intended. <laughs> <laughs> so their script will still need some work, but for all we know, Nas did mean the English dessert. He did mean a rap trifle, and he did mean it on top of a source of beats. So that's all for today. If you have any questions, I'm happy to let you know to answer any questions about this. Let's see what yeah, happens. If anybody to... has questions, there it I is. Have the mic. Uh, just out of curiosity, what's the strangest rapper word combination you've come across? Uh, the strangest rapper word combinations, um, it's a good question. Probably what inspired the site back early on, if I could go back to some of the first posts, were some of, some of my actual favorites. Like, uh, I don't know, um, I probably should do this in a more advanced way. I, I don't know any off, offhand, but I think I'm always surprised. Like there are some rappers who just, you know they're gonna use, like have extended vocabulary. Like people have done some data science on finding rappers with the most extensive vocabulary. But this is like the opposite thing. I wanna find, you know, the most limited vocabulary with the most like rare exceptions. Like finding those little rare nuggets of gold in their rhymes. I don't know offhand uh, which one's the most surprising. Like I thought the first one at the top was pretty cool. The Paul Wall one, uh, it's not even that complicated of a word, but it's uh, insinuate. You see them fours crawling, you see them trains falling, the disco ball in my mouth insinuates I'm balling. See, just kind of cool. Because Paul Wall's like a southern rapper, got a lot of grills. He's good, he's good though. Um, yeah, sorry if that went a little, a little fast, maybe glazed over a lot of code. Uh, do you have a strategy when the rhymes are not following each other's but are alternating between the lines? Oh yeah, I didn't even consider that. Excellent possibility. I mean, I'd assume that the rhyme was at the end of the word. And there are also rhymes, um, you know, that are not even the last syllable of the word. Like, um, I don't have a good example, but like the end of the rhyme 
the first syllable rhymes, but the second syllable doesn't, and that my script doesn't even do that. But I'm automating at least some portion of it. And uh, if I have to review each post, that's not so bad. Uh, maybe you mentioned this, but um, is this something you have on a cron job, or are you just running it manual by hand every time? Uh, so far, I've never run it on the cron job. I don't know. I think about it would have to send me some, you know, I have to user interaction with me before it does any posting. So that automation step I have not done yet. It's just all within the notebook here, um, like all the API calls. Uh, I mean, this could be shipped off to uh, some service, some web service, but. Uh, Content is pretty key for a blog. This has been a, I have a lot of followers. Just kidding. This one I don't have a lot of followers, but I have other Tumblr blogs that are pretty good. Uh, you think we have uh, one or two more questions here? What other tum <laughs> Tumblr blogs do you have? Oh, well, I, I'm a scientist by trade, so I have a science images Tumblr that's what my claim to fame is. I have like, uh, they're just images of like, you know, microsco microscopic things or scientists or like illustrations, biomedical illustrations and molecular renderings and stuff. It's pretty cool. It's called Fresh Photons. But I actually don't know what, what I posted recently, so I mean, it can't be bad, but it's, uh, yeah, just like, all, they're just of all topics, these uh, interesting things that float around Tumblr. Yeah, so that's my more successful one. But this is good too. It's this is passive income. See these ads? Generated uh it's actually pretty high on the Google search for rap words. If I don't know if you ever searching you're a rapper struggling. Uh okay, well there's my image. Okay, I'm number I'm three. Or well, maybe four. Yeah. Uh, Say that again? Oh, yeah, maybe incognito window? Oh, yeah, you're right, that's a good point. <laughs> I don't know, probably still know something about me, but it's there. And, sorry, could you clarify, did you have this running completely automatically, or were you having it create, uh, like a number of suggestions that then you were manually going through. Exactly. It's a latter case. It's like they to generate suggestions, and I choose from that. Actually, all the content that's currently on the blog was fully manually done by like my own hearing up a, hearing a word or grepping a word of interest. I haven't done any automation of the content yet. This is like could be turned on soon. But how I would hope this script worked was that I would generate suggestions, I would review them. All right, last question. Hi, this is quite interesting. Did you ever think of maybe creating a, a machine learning algorithm approach to, to look historically at what you've done so it would then learn what you think is interesting and then automatically choose it for you? Well, that would be a really good personalization. You want your blog to be personalized to your taste. Like, I have a certain taste in music that I hope is refined enough that my, you know, Followers would know that they know it's good content. So I have not done that or thought of that. So that would be, you know, like learning what I post. I have, don't have very many posts. I have like hundreds of posts. So the data is not quite there yet about what my preference is. But to have it gradually learn would be a nice treat. I mean, people have used machine learning to generate, like with recurrent neural nets, to generate like new rap from a corpus of rap lyrics. That's pretty recently. That was on Hacker News. But uh, this is, I think, this is a funner. This is a funner project and just uh, rap lyrics like that. All right, thanks Chris. You're welcome.